Hello everyone and welcome back to the farmer was replaced. And uh, yeah, today, as I promised, uh, we are going to be looking at um, sunflowers. So in the last episode, we basically uh, looked at pump the pumpkin farm. So essentially, if we do this, then um, yeah, we're basically harvesting pumpkins. So if we just give it some time to grow all those pumpkins and not fail, there we go, big pumpkin. And then, boom, done. So then we get a whole bunch of pumpkins. Okay, so let's reset our farm. And uh, let's uh, just move to zero, zero, reset farm. And just go back to basics. Okay, cool. So uh, first thing that we need to do is unlock um, uh, sunflowers. There we go. Okay, so let's see what this is all about. Uh, I'm just going to move all of this stuff a bit here. Uh, these, these ones we don't use, use that much. Okay, so sunflowers. Uh, sunflowers collect the power of the sun. You can harvest that power. Planting them works exactly the same way as planting carrots, except you have to buy sunflower seeds instead of carrot seeds. That's pretty self-explanatory. Happy. Um, however, when you harvest a sunflower, the power of all the sunflowers on the farm flows together into the harvested plant. Okay. Thus, harvesting a sunflower yields power equal to the square root of the number of sunflowers on the farm. Only one of the sunflowers with the most petals can handle this. If you harvest a sunflower that doesn't have the most petals of all the sunflowers on the farm, the power will destroy all the sunflowers on the farm. Okay. So, just uh, before we carry on with the rest, if we have a whole grid full of sunflowers and we harvest any of the sunflowers that are not the one with the most petals, it will destroy everything. Am I right? And then essentially, if we harvest the one with the most petals, then um, it will basically harvest the power of all of them, basically, to the square root of, hold on, the harvesting a sunflower power, uh, the sunflower yields power equal to the square root of the number of sunflowers on the farm. Okay, okay, okay. So the square root of the total number of sunflowers. Okay, so yeah, we're we're gonna have to do some magic here. <laughs> uh, the measure function re returns the number of petals of the sunflower under the drone. Sunflowers have at least seven, and at most fifteen. So fifteen is the most petals. Okay, they can be measured before they are fully grown. Okay, so that's good. So we can actually measure, like plant a sunflower and then measure it directly. So it's not like over time it gets more petals. Several sunflowers can can have the same number of petals. So there can also be several sunflowers with the largest number of petals. In this case, it doesn't matter which one of them you harvest. Okay, cool. So if we have, let's say, three sunflowers, one here, one there, and one at the end, that all have 15, then it doesn't matter which one we harvest, it will basically work for all three. Okay, as long as you have power, um, as long as you have power, the drone will use it to run twice as fast. It consumes one power every 30 actions, like moves, harvests, plants, and so forth. So forth. Executing other code statements can also use power, but a lot less than drone actions. Okay, so essentially power will make a drone twice as fast. That's awesome. In general, everything that is sped up by speed upgrades is also sped up by power. Anything sped up by power also uses power proportional to the time it takes to execute, ignoring speed upgrades. Okay. Okay, so we have a few things to do here. And essentially, what I want to do 
is I want to unlock the debug func function because the debug function will allow us to pause at specific code, but also we can use the print function. So if we want to like print one, it will print as one. If we want to print, for example, 150, it will print as 150. But what we can also do is we can pass in a, a function like this or the, the value of that function, and then it will give us the X position and the Y position. So four. So we're on X zero, four, uh, well, Y four. Okay, so now we have the print function. I also want to unlock the lists function or the lists uh, functionality, basically. Now, what lists are? Lists are basically a list of um, objects. For example, here, we have an array. Um, I'm going to call them arrays, but essentially they're lists. Um, in the programming language I use mainly on a day-to-day -day basis, it's called an array. And essentially, we have an array of objects here. And so the objects are a primitive value, uh, which is an integer, two, a boolean, and an object of items.hey. Okay. So we can put in any number of items in, in an array and we can put any object in an array. So what I want to do with arrays is essentially map out this grid. Because if we take sunflowers into account, we need to figure out which sunflowers to harvest and essentially find the maximum um, number of petals and that's also where these um, utilities are going to come in the min max absolute and random and essentially we're going to use max in this scenario because essentially we want to get them the maximum number of petals across all of them and harvest that one because if we don't harvest the max one we will basically explode the farm uh, per se so what this then means is that essentially, um, so let's just also go through lists quickly. So basically an empty list is just how you declare it. Um, we can get a specific item from a list. So as lists are also zero indexed. So the index of, is zero for the first element. So this is index zero, index one and index two. So essentially we can call plant with list index one and it will basically plant carrots. Then we can also iterate over a list using a for loop. So essentially we have this list and uh, this is a basic sum function. So taking all of these values and sum it onto this variable and we can just say for the number, which is the going to be the number in, inside the list in list is then basically sum plus equal number and the sum is then 18. We can also add elements to the, the list using the append function. We can remove elements from the list. Um, we can insert elements in a into the list as well. So inserting is basically not adding it to the end or removing it from the, uh, from the end either. Uh, the, uh, removing re removes the first occurrence of an element. Okay, cool. But the the insert is we specify the index of the um, of where we're going to insert it. So, for example, if we here, if we say insert at index one, it's going to take this two and move it up to index two and insert our element in there. So everything after that and including that will move up one space. Then we have pop, which is basically um, just removing that um, that item from that specific index. So if we don't specify it, then the last item is removed. If we specify it, then um, so for example, one, then basically uh, number five is removed. Then we also have a len, a len fun function. So that just returns us the length of the list. And then Lists have a uh, reference semantics. This means that assigning a list to a variable assigns the same list object to that variable rather than making a copy of the list. Okay, cool. 
So essentially, yeah, so essentially if we create A as a list and we assign A to B and we uh, modify B, then both A and B gets uh, modified. Um, because essentially an object has a reference and then we're only assigning the reference of the object into B. So B has a reference to A. And then if we modify B, then we're modifying A as well. Okay, so that's lists. Now, there's a few things we'll probably have to do here. And essentially, we'll have to create a list of our grid. So it's going to be an array of arrays with numbers. And I'll explain as we go along how that's going to work, because that, that it can get a little bit more complicated that way. But we also need a function to move to a specific location. Because now if, if we find that we have a, a sunflower with a petal, well, with petals of 15, um, let's say in this position here, which is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So it is basically at position 2, 2. Then, and we are, let's say here, we need to move to that location. And we do have a move to 0, 0. But all that this does is it says move south and west and essentially break if we're at zero zero so that's just it literally just it's hard code to move to zero zero there what i would like to do is have a function that we can pass in the x and y value and essentially move to any location on the board here and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function here and this is going to be our move to location class okay we're going to define a function uh, move to location and it's going to take an x and a y value okay then um what do we need so essentially we we are passing in where we want to go so the x and y here is where we want to go to we need to figure out where we currently at so we can say current x equals get position x and current y equals get position y okay just for now i'm just gonna uh, let's just do that move to location and let's say we want to move to location five five so location five five at the moment it's not really going to do it because we don't have any movement code but essentially what we need to do is move to a specific location here now what i was actually thinking about this also a little bit down the line after my previous video because I know that we kind of needed a function like this, uh, especially when we get to a little bit more advanced stuff. And this also might come in handy for the pumpkins, um, which could potentially be um, uh, be required. And essentially, we can move to a specific location. So let's work on the X axis first. And essentially we're saying we want to move to location uh, 5, 5. And we're currently at 0, 0. What, how do we get to 5, 5? So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we want to get here. So how do we get there? And what's the easiest way to get there? Now, we can make it a lot more complicated because essentially the shortest route for us to get there would be to go left because then because here we would have to move um one two three four five blocks in order to get here or yeah five times we have to move five times uh, right to get to this um x5 but we only need to move three so one two three this way now that's gonna complicate things a little bit and I don't think we need that because our drone is quite fast. And essentially, so what we can what we can do is we can say while current x is 
not X. We want to move, for example, east. Okay. So this is going to now move my drone east. So if we do this, it's... Okay, so... Ah, okay. I know what's wrong here. We need to also update current X because now we're moving current X constantly. So if we take this and do that, boom, okay. But let's say we do that now. We are going to do that. Okay, cool. So that, that still works, but it's not perfectly great in terms of what I had in mind. And essentially what I want to do, sorry, uh, let me make this a little, little bit bigger as well. Okay, what I actually want to do is not call this, because remember what we read on the sunflowers, actually. It says here, as long as you have power, the drone will use, use it to run twice as fast. It consumes one power every 30 actions. So like moves, harvests, plants, and so on and so forth. So that means whenever we call functions like this and moving, then we are going to use more power and which I don't really want to, I want to minimize it. And essentially what we can do is if we want to move to five, five, because five is greater than um, our current position, we know we need to move east. If our current position or if the X is less than our current position, we need to move west. So we can do that. We can say if the current X is greater than X, then move west. Else move east. And that, we're still calling a function here, which I don't think is needed. So if we remove that, we are going to need to update it because this is now going to just be an infinite loop again. But if we move west, current X, where we're currently at, is technically going to be minus equal, uh, minus equal one. And if we move east, it's going to plus equal one. Because if we move east, we're moving up on the X scale. If we move west, it's moving down on the X scale. So if we do, if we test this now, oh, oops, I keep on forgetting that. Now it moved to five. If I move this to zero, it moved to zero. So we now, we now know that the X axis works perfectly fine. Now we just need to do the same for the Y axis. So if we copy all of this, it's a bit of repetitive code, but it is okay for now. We'll obviously enhance it a little bit later if we need to. So then we do current Y, current Y, there we go. And now for this one, if we, if the current Y is greater than Y, we want to move south. And if it's less than, then we can move north. And that is then, so if we move back to zero, so if we want to move to six, five, we do that, boom. If we want to move back to zero, zero, boom. If we want to move to one, five, there we go. So now we can move to any location on the board, which is absolutely awesome and that will come in handy just now i think because we'll probably use this to work on the sunflowers okay so now we've got that what is next next is going to be the sunflowers so we're going to need a few things here we're going to need some of our movement code and if we do that, we'll move to start always. And then we'll cut that part of there. There. So now 
our movement should be sorted. Perfect. Okay, movement is sorted. Let's move back to zero, zero. And actually, we can change this now to move to location, zero, zero. There we go. So now, if we end up there, it will just go back to zero, zero, and then continue on its merry way. Awesome. So that is then our first case. Then what we need to do is we need to start planting our sunflowers. That is going to be interesting. So let's change this to sunflower farm. And here we're going to do a plant sunflower plus. This is going to be very similar to what we have with the other ones. So for example, where is this one here? So very similar to that. This is going to be um, plant sunflower. And uh, uh, yeah, plant sunflower. Okay, cool. And we need to get seeds. So this can go to sunflower seeds. And we'll do that the same for example like that we also planting it on tilled soil so that's this is good as well and then essentially we can then just plant uh, there we go and what we want to plant is a sunflower okay so let's give that a run um plant sunflower let's see how that works Oh, we don't have world size. Oops. Um, world size here. There we go. Uh, those two can go together. Okay. Now we are planting sunflowers. Okay. And now it's not going to plant anything because, yeah, it's it can't really plant anything. Okay. So... If we, I just want to check if this is true. If we just harvest any one of these, well, because we can see some of them have more petals. Uh, what we can also do is just like do a measure. Um, let's print out the measure. And we have nine. Okay. If we move to location, of what's this um zero one two three four five six one two three four five uh so six five let's do that six five okay that's 15 okay so that's 15 if we do six two uh no uh six one get okay, nine if we harvest this one now what happens? Okay, everything disappears. We did get some power though, but everything disappears. So we don't want that. If we do this now again, we can also see it's much faster now because we had power. Okay. Uh, if we do zero... Um, so... No. Uh, this is X, so we want to go to X, one, two, three, four. So four, like there, 15. Okay, so if we harvest this one now, then it stays. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's reset. Um, let's do that. There we go. Okay, let's reset. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out what goes for what and which location has the highest number of um of uh, petals and for that we're going to use lists because essentially what i was actually thinking of doing is creating an array so i can show you here and essentially what the array is going to be is it's going to be an array 
of multiple arrays. And essentially, the arrays is going to be, uh, so for example, uh, let's say 1, 15, uh, tw uh, 12, so on and so forth. And then essentially, there's going to be multiples of them in here. Um, do uh, work with me. There we go. And if we make this a 6, a 4, and a 15, and let's say a 7. Uh, once, okay, the, doesn't matter. Now, essentially, I think how we're going to do this is this is going to be so each array is going to be the y axis, if I'm not mistaken, I think. I think we can do it like that. And then each number is going to be the x axis in terms of the measure of um, how many petals they have. So then that way we know this is going to be y0. So this array is going to be y0. This array is going to be y1. Then each position in here is going to be the x position. So then we can say, okay, cool. We find the maximum number of petals. So in this case, it would be 15. Let's say this was 14. Then the max would be 14. So we harvest 14. And essentially, we now know it's going to be y0, x1, y1, x2. And essentially, because this is position two within this array. So that's essentially my idea that we can do here, perhaps. But let's test it out. So if we keep this, um, I just want to get rid of the, these errors. There we go. OK, so if we keep this example, what we want to do is we want to create a list. So let's call it um, sunflower list. Okay, and it's an empty array. Now, because it's empty, we need to add stuff to it. And essentially, so we kind of like prepping the list. So um, prep list for um, each cell or grid cell. There we go. And essentially what we want to do here now is we need to go through the world size and basically add the grid. So how do we do this uh, for loops again? We can do for n, n range of get world size. So it's going to loop the world size is currently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's going to loop 8 times here. Then because we need to create inner lists as well, we can say we create a new variable inner list equals uh, it's an array and we are going to loop through the world size again because we're looping through for the world size x and the y so we need to loop through it twice so we'll copy that we'll change this to o and then what we need to do is we need to then append inner list dot append um an array of um no it's this like so okay and essentially in our list isn't an array hold on i just need to think here in our list because then basically we're appending a value to the inner list shouldn't it just be zero like so because now what we're going to do is we're going to go into sunflower list dot append inner list like so because now basically we're creating multiple inner lists which is those with each value yeah, I think it's, I think that's, 
Yes, I think that should be correct. Uh, we've got that. We've got that. There we go. Okay, so that is prepping the list. I'm, I'm still not sure about this one. Uh, let's just add a comment. Either zero or zero. But I think it should be that. Okay, then... So we moved, so that's just prepping the list. So now we have a list that is basically, um, for example, like that. So like that. So what we can do is we can basically put a breakpoint there. So that's part of the debug functions here that I unlocked. We can put now a breakpoint. So if we run this, it will stop there. So see, this is now red because we stopped at the breakpoint. And now we can just hover over the sunflower list here. And now we can see there we have our array of arrays with numbers in them. And essentially each number is then now each cell. And each array is then the size of the grid. And so essentially we have now eight arrays within uh, an array and then eight values within a um, within a array or an array. Okay, I know it can be a little bit more difficult to understand, but bear with me. Okay, so if we stop this, uh, I don't want to do that. Let's just reset again. Uh, let's just move. Oh, we don't need that one. We can just move to that one and harvest. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now we've got that. What do we do next? We need to say if, and we only want to do this if, uh, so we kind of want to spare our power. And essentially how we're going to do that is we are only going to plant uh, if the entity type is equal to none or in some cases we, uh, because in some cases we might use this reset this harvest all and reset and then there will be grass and essentially or if the get entity type is equal to entities dot grass then we want to do stuff and that stuff is going to be our plant sunflower with that we want to update the sunflower list because now that we've planted we can measure it directly thereafter because here it says um do, do, do returns so they can be measured before they are fully grown so we can literally plant and measure and essentially how we're going to do that is now we need to access specific um, indexes of the of the array and how we're going to do that is by specifying the x and y position because now our list has been prepped so for example like this and essentially uh, now we can say if we're on position zero zero we need to update this number if we're on position one zero we need to update this number so we can use that specify the first position which is a y position get position y and then so what we're going to get back from this is a, another array so directly thereafter we can specify another array position that we want to um, access and this is going to be get position no um get position x and we want to set that to measure. So now, essentially, we are basically measuring the current block that we're currently standing on. So this one, after we have planted the sunflower and we are setting that measure value onto the list for that position. So if we do that, so what we can do is uh, put a breakpoint over there and I can then show you guys. So if we do that, now if we check this, 
this, we can see right at the start of the array, there's now an eight because this sunflower that we have planted only has eight petals. If we just continue and let's stop there again, we can now see on the second array, there's a value of 10. So just below get position X, there's now in the new array, there's a, uh, there's a number 10. So this petal, oh, this sunflower has 10 petals. So if we do that multiple times up to the end, and there. So now each and every position here in the array has now a number and we can see them ranging from anywhere from seven up to 15. Do we even have a 15? Yes, we do. We actually have on the left side of the array, we have two 15s there. Okay, so that means we need to now harvest those two 15s. And essentially what we, what we then can do, so now nothing is gonna be happening. It's not now not gonna do anything because this stops it from trying to plant or whatever. Now we can do else, and now we can basically write our code to actually figure out what we need to do. So let's reset this again and harvest. There we go. Okay. Now we need to figure out what we need to do here. And essentially we need to figure out what the max petals at this point is going to be, because when it gets to this point, it means that we have now um, planted all of our sunflowers. And essentially what I want to do is I want to create a variable here called uh, max petals equals zero. There we go. And we need to now figure out in the sunflower list what the max petals is because we need to, we can only harvest the max petals. And essentially it can be 15, it can be 14, it can be uh, 13, 12, 10, 11, 9, 8 or 7. And essentially if it's any one of those, but whichever is the highest in this grid at the moment, we need to harvest. So we need to just figure out what the max is first. And the way that we do that is we need to now go through the sunflower list. And what we can then do is say, uh, cool, uh, for our Y list. Uh, so it's just the Y. Yeah, because it's a, it's a list um, because we're going to get this is going to be Y list um, equal in uh, sunflower list. So we're going to loop through each list now. So that's Y list. And at the same time for X val in Y list, because now we're looping through each value individually. And now we can say um, max do, 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 do. no hold on this is not gonna work don't hold on um, what we want to do because we want to do it in each loop because we we don't want to keep it keep track of it outside because it might change because if we harvest all of the 15s and there are no more 15s we need to reset it to go back to 14 for example if there is a 14 so current max petals equals zero okay and then we can say current max petals equals the max of current max petals or xval so like that because now basically we're going to this xval is eat the individual value here so that will then tell us that we can um, which one is the max value between these two values so essentially um we start off with zero xval let's for example uh let's do this as seven 12, 6, and 15. Okay. 
So we're going through this and then we see, okay, cool. Uh, we, we want the max between this one and XVAL. This one at the, at the first one is going to be zero because we initialize it as zero. And then XVAL is going to be seven. So it's going to set current max petals to seven. Then it's going to go through this again and get to 12. Now it's, this is going to be seven. This is going to be 12. What, what's it going to set onto that? 12, because that's the maximum value between these two. So on and so forth, and then up until it gets to 15. Then, um, okay, so that is going to be the first part to it. Okay, so now that we have our current max petals, we can basically um, start harvesting each location. Because essentially now we need to kind of, I think, loop through this again. Because we need to, we needed to loop through everything first to find what is the current max petals. So which one can we measure, uh, harvest, sorry. Now we need to look through them again to get the X and Y position of each one that has that's equal to the current max petals. And if it's equal to that, then we can harvest it. So what we do is basically just do another loop here. I know multiple loops isn't specifically great, but in this scenario, it's kind of OK. Um, it gets worse if you do multiple loops, if you have masses of amounts of data, but in this case, it's fine. But we also need to keep track of our X and Y position because we, yes, we have a Y list and X val, but we don't have the position in the list. And how we can do that is by specifying a Y counter equals zero. And essentially the Y counter will basically increment every time when the the four uh, four x file is finished so which is in this location here so plus equal one and so essentially what this means is that if we do here we we'll need an x counter here um equals zero because we want the x counter to reset each and every time when we when the y list gets um updated or uh, goes through again because then here we then say plus equal one so in this scope or well, this scope is only happening within this this one happens in this for loop so once the this for loop is finished it will then increment the y and then it will then restart in here to go to the next location. So this is then Y1. Okay, and we want it, want it to happen at the end because yeah, that's at the moment what we need. Okay, then what we need here is we need to check if XVAL is equal to the current max petals. And if it is, we need to first move to that location. So that's the, actually where this comes in. So if we copy that, we need to move to the X and Y location. And then essentially, so that's then gonna move to that specific location and then we harvest. With that, think, that should be, it should be it. We'll just double check that just now. So let's, let's test it. Let's, because we haven't tasted our code yet thus far. So, and we have written a lot of code. So let's check it. So we plant and it's actually, okay. So now it's stuck because essentially it's going to the same locations over and over and over again, because this list still contains the max petals number that we have. So that's actually quite neat. So if we go to just position uh, Y1, there we go, let's harvest and reset. 
So we do that. Okay. Um, with that, we now need to update the location. So after we've harvested, what we can do is we can then plant again. So plant sunflower. That's actually going to be required because we want to do this again. So this and this, but yet again, because we don't want to um, execute multiple uh, functions over and over and over again. And the thing is, we don't need to get the position X and Y again, because we do have that. We actually have that and we'll just get the measure again. And then essentially, um, if we do that, cool. Let's, let's check that down. Okay. It worked to some degree, but now it's all messed up because essentially it kind of broke. Um, it just, I don't know, it harvested something that wasn't supposed to. Now, why would that be? Why would that be? Huh. Is it? Oh. oh, okay, 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 okay. Because we're planting another sunflower. So, for example, if what we're harvesting and the max current petals are is like 12. So we're harvesting 12. If we plant a new sunflower and it's it has a 15, then we can't be harvesting 12 anymore. We, we have to harvest 15. So how are we going to figure that out? Um, if we do current petals equals measure, we can then set that onto that. Then what we can do is if the current petals is greater than the current max petals then we kind of need to like I'm gonna break but the thing is we need to break out of both these loops the easiest way to do that would be to break the loop equals false and then we set that to true here like so and then we need to break out of this loop as well, which is going to be here. Uh, yes, here. But if break loop, then break. Like so. Because then it will kind of like restart. So let's let's double check that. Uh, there we go. Okay, let's let's double check that. Let's see if that happens. If that's better. Okay, it's harvesting now. It's still successful. It's planting and everything. It's awesome. It's very quick. And we are getting power. So we're using power, but also we're still getting power. So as we can see here at the top, 405, 411. Because each and every time when we harvest, we basically get additional power. But as we can see, it's kind of like only going mostly between multiples. It's not really going to harvest a lot because they're just getting a lot less. Yeah. Because the max number of petals only probably get less and less and less. So eventually it's going to probably harvest all of them because the max is going to be seven. But we're kind of wasting precious speed and time here. So what if we actually reset this whole thing? Because now, essentially, all of these are mostly like 
the same or a lot less. And it's not really going to give us much. Yeah. See, it's, it's not giving us much. So what if we reset this? And how are we going to do that? So let's just reset completely. And essentially, what we can do is let's count. So here we have total below, let's say 12, I think. And then what we can then do is just after this, we can then check if XVAL is less than 12, then total below 12 is plus equal, uh, plus equal one. So then basically we now know here at this point how many are below 12. Just because basically like we want higher number, um, higher number uh, sunflowers. And essentially if we now do that and then basically say where would the best part for that be? I think between this one to reset it. So we can do if total below 12 is let's say greater than your how we're gonna do this uh world size minus five so if it's uh, if if the total number of um sunflowers are greater than the world size minus five so it's, it's quite a high number actually uh we can this number we can play around with but for now this should be fine then essentially what we want to do is move to location zero and zero and essentially what we're doing here and then essentially we need to i think also because we're now moving to a new location uh yeah we need to before our usual movement we need to just set this to true again to reset it and then also harvest so this should in theory um oh yeah we don't want to do this then because now we're kind of like resetting so we want to do a continue so this continue is just going to tell this wild true loop to skip everything here and just rest restart from the top so in theory that should reset it to to zero so then we'll redo this and then this again and then basically it should be fine let's check it let's check it okay okay so the total number below 12 probably got to quite a lot then and then essentially what we can also do is if it is less than just the world size um if the if it's greater or equal to the world size um it just equal because then basically if everything is below 12 then just reset really okay and then we'll just go and now we're harvesting power from the sun that's our, our own little solar farm yeah so i think that is our sunflower farm to be honest so yeah yet again there are many ways to skin a cat and essentially uh what we can even do for example because it does reset it quite quickly so what we can do is let's say let's rather do 10. uh so we'll rename this to 10 total below 10 uh total below 10 and where was that here there we go so then in theory uh this should now last a little bit longer and in the long run we'll get a little bit less but that's fine and yeah so 
there are obviously a million ways to do this so if you have any other suggestions please feel free to let me know if you if you see any problems with my code here um so this is basically my code it is quite a bit but essentially um we can remove that one we can remove that one and we can remove that one so if we move this one up here and this one over here then there we have all the code so if you're working on this with uh, like together with me as well then here's all the code uh, let me stop this so you can there we go so you can just pause the video here if you'd like but essentially um this is all the code so if you see any problems with the code let me know if you have a better suggestion in terms of i did something wrong um let me know and uh, yeah but i hope that you found this helpful but on that note guys if you like this video please feel free to leave a like and if you're not subscribed please feel free feel free to subscribe as well to keep updated with the series but on that note, guys, have an absolutely, absolutely fantastic day, and I will see you in the next episode. Cheers.